Alright guys, and welcome back to more Fire Emblem Awakening. <clears throat> uh, last time we just completed Chapter 5, where we had to pretty much take on a whole bunch of enemies coming at us at once. They were extra weak though, which is a good thing, because we would have been easily overwhelmed if I had not leveled up. I, I did not grind in that DLC. I did check it out. The only time I used that DLC to level up is just when I had up or not uploaded, but pretty much checked out that DLC on camera uh, back in episode 10 I believe that was the only time I ever used the damn DLC everything else I don't know it just kinda seemed easy I'm guessing there's gonna be a difficulty spike cause everybody's just going crazy talking about I won't be able to beat it on hard classic just because just because I couldn't do, uh, beat that damn mission without that much trouble and that was uh, with Darnell that, that mission was just retarded because if he got hit once he was dead if he got hit once, he was dead. That just pissed me off. That was the only thing I hated about that mission was that as soon as he gets touched, it's over. But anyway, we got Donnell on our crew. That was the, like, the only hard part so far in this game. So let's continue with Fire Emblem Awakening. <clears throat> Whoa. Two new spots. One was green and one was red. It's... Ela stole chapter six, or what was this green spot? The twins' turf, paralog two. Now, usually the side quest ones are a little bit tougher because there's always some extra requirement that they require you to do. Like for Donnie, it was so hard to complete that in recruiting because you needed him to level up. But the thing is, for him to level up, he has to attack somebody and or beat him at least. And if he wasn't strong enough, he would have died in one hit. So I want to know what the requirements are for that one. But before we check that out, let's go ahead and do some support stuff. Krom and Sumia again. Ewan and Lisa again. Very and Frederick. Fre uh, Frederick. We need to start. I want to start pairing up Sully and Ewan. Sully seems like a cool chick. I want to get to know her. Alright, let's do Sumia and Krom. Pardon me. Krom, where are you? Hello! Mm. I'm right here, Sumia. Yes! Oh, there you are. Um, so here, I baked you a pie. What? Really? Well, that is a surprise. It smells amazing. But... You've been working so hard recently, so I thought you must be tired. My mother used to make, uh, used to bake me rhubarb and fiddlehead pies. What? And it seems... And it always perked me up. That sounds nasty. Hmm? Fiddleheads? No mutton, no goat, or a bear? I usually prefer a bit of meat in my pies. Really? <laughs> no. Absolutely not. Meat is the last thing you need when your body's worn out. <laughs> a stick of rhubarb will clear your bowels and get you right as rain in no time. <laughs> That's what my mother used to say anyway, and she's always right. Right. <laughs> Old Nurse Nan used to say the same thing when I was young. <laughs> See? They can't be wrong. <clears throat> they both can't be wrong. Now eat your pie while I go clean your small clothes. I see quite a pile forming on the far side of your cot there. Well, go on. Don't mind me now. Just eat your pie. Hmm. Very well, if you insist. Hmm. Gotta hate rhubarb. But if Sumia thinks I'll make, it'll make me feel better, I suppose I should force it down. Hmm. Hey, this isn't bad. In fact, it's delicious. Well, that was about the best pie I ever had. Hello, Krom, I'm back. Oh, have you finished already? Yes. I did, and it was amazing. Usually, rhubarb makes me queasy, but not this time. What's your secret? Oh. Oh, nothing special. Just a bit of spice here and a pinch of herb there. You can make anything taste like anything if you know the tricks. Really? Well, you'll make a fine wife. I'm more than impressed. You're a true wizard of the kitchen. Oh. I'm glad you liked it. Now then, how about a cup of elder, elderberry tea? No. Hold on, you you made me a pie, so I should be making you tea. Just let me boil some water here. My love. Oh, oh, Krom. <laughs> this is too much, really. <laughs> I knew he loved the pie. Especially since it took me 15 tries to get it right. <laughs> she soft reset it. <laughs> she soft reset her oven 15 times. <laughs> Oh, excuse me, 14 times is how many times he soft reset it for the pie to come out perfect. 
Let's go ahead and have Ewan talk with Lisa. Hey! Hey there, Ewan! Get away from me, you she-devil! Don't uh, <laughs> go getting your hackles up. I'm not here to prank you. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, don't talk to me again. <laughs> huh? Aw, oh, come on! Wait, are you really mad? Yeah. Of course I'm mad. You dumped a toad down my collar. I'm pretty sure that was a frog. I'm pretty sure I don't care. <laughs> okay, okay, I'm sorry, Ewan. I'm super duper 100% sorry. And I won't do it again, so please be my friend again, okay? Hmm. You're really sorry? Mm -hmm. Terribly. Mm -hmm. And you swear you won't do it again? Right. Princess is on there. Right. Well, alright. In that case, I suppose I can forgive you. Let's just shake hands and put this silliness behind us. <laughs> Thanks, Ewan. You're the best. What is this in your hand? It's a snake! A snake? Oh no, Lisa, I'm pretty sure this is a worm. Gotcha! Hey. <laughs> I thought my heart was going to jump out of my throat. <laughs> You're terrible, you ain't, and a total hypocrite. <laughs> what? Huh? Why don't you show me what's in your hand then? Huh? What? What's this? <laughs> How did this frog get here? <laughs> right. Sorry, you were saying something about hypocrites? <laughs> oh, it's no fun when you see it coming. I'd have to be blind not to at this point. Next time I'm gonna prank you good. And next time I'll seriously stop talking to you. <laughs> what? Oh, fine. Oh, I guess I'll stop for real this time. I guess I have a long way to go. Whoa. Until you grow up? <sighs> no. I got about a dozen frogs to put back. <laughs> wow. What a jokester. Alright. We also have Varian and Frederick. Right. That's quite the handsome blade you carry, Varian. Do tell. Ah, you're a discerning eye, Frederick. Yes, it is rather nice, isn't it? Elegant, sophisticated, a perfect match for its owner. Why, it's almost... Really? The hilt bears the sigil of the house clave. Sorry about this, but I gotta do something. I don't know what the hell is going on. Alright guys, sorry about that. I am back. I just had to take care of some nonsense on my computer. But anyway, we return. The Sigil of House Cleave. <sighs> yes, but you interrupted me. Forgive me. Apologies, but it's been troubling me for some time now. Just how is it you come to hold the dagger from Ulysses' high noble houses? Oh, yes. I enjoyed the brief but fruitful collaboration with the Claves once upon a time. Well, specifically with one young and very beautiful clave. <laughs> she gave me this blade as a token of our everlasting friendship. Explain. I see. And when exactly did you find the time to foster such a bond? Ah, oh. oh, my dear naive Frederick. Not all bonds take time to form, you know. <laughs> Some are forged in a lifetime, while others spring to life in a moment. Others still take but one very good night. <laughs> wow. Ladies, man. Please. Please, spare, spare me the pious air. But is that yet a hint of envy I see as well? <laughs> well, permit me to explain. It is my avocation to grant noble ladies a brief respite from their dreary lives. And I know of no better way to do so than by romance sweet perfume. Romance's sweet perfume. But I always acted the gentleman. No harm befell the honor or reputation. Ah, ah that was never my concern. Illyssi's noble houses are built of sturdier stuff than one dandy's escapades can shape. Tell me, sir, do you always smile so as you twist the blade in a fellow's gut? <laughs> you wondered at the history of my blade, and now cur curiosity is slate. If that's quite all, this dandy shall leave you to save your unshakable honor. Right. Avocation, he says. <laughs> quite a hobby. Yet I bet he has made many other powerful allies through such tries. <laughs> the man is sly. <laughs> Me thinks he's merits watching. Wow. So he thinks he can benefit from watching him in the act. Okay. So let's view the barracks. Or the barracks. Hello, Ewan. Is it time for a break? Well, it's actually 427. I need to take a break soon anyway. Now, I'm not even sure if I want to do this one yet. Maybe I should just progress the game a little bit before I do another side quest. That's what I want to do. Let's progress the game a little bit. And then we'll do that side quest 
Once we complete chapter six of Elastol. Chapter six, the Foreseer. Hey, it's Kron. What are you doing out so late at night? Uh, Krom? What are you doing so... I just said that! I literally just said that! I should literally be in this game! <clears throat> oh, hi, you, and just dealing with some unpleasant thoughts. Listen. Tomorrow, we march to Regna Ferox to request additional soldiers. But there is something you should know first. Not every gang girl said... Not everything gang girl said was a lie. The last exalt my father waged war on the pleasure for many years. The violence, it was a brutal campaign ending only with his death 15 years ago. Pledger rightfully remembers their suffering, but this war was no kinder to his own people. As the fighting dragged on, our army became more and more diminished. Farmers who could barely wield a pitchfork were constricted and sent to their deaths. Damn! Soon there was no food at all, and the kingdom began to collapse. I was young, but I remember those dark days. I know how they affected Emmerin. Such an experience would change anyone. Indeed, when our father died before her tenth year, he left her quite the legacy. Pelagia's desire for vengeance, our own people's unbridled rage. My sister became a target for blame on all sides. Damn. Her own subject began to hurl insults and stones. Damn. She still bears the scars from one. But she never let them see her pain. Only Lisa and I understood. It must have been hard. <laughs> I cannot claim to know what she does it. How she does it, Ewan. I could never agree such hostility with warmth and patience. While our people mocked and vilified her, she reached out and healed them. She brought soldiers home to their families. She ended the war. And when Illyssi's spirit was mended and the people forgave her, she never resented them for it. She represents the best of the Halidom, the part most worth protecting. She is peace. But some men would take advantage of that, men like King Gangrel. The day he understands peace will be the day death gives it to him. Ha! Ah, man, crime. It's awesome. So perhaps I must be death's agent. Whoa! Imran would never order him... <clears throat> excuse me. He would ne she would never order him killed, nor would I wish her to. So you want to make this a covert action crime? Right. Well spoken, sir. <clears throat> Marth, what are you doing here? Good evening to you. Good evening to you. <clears throat> How did you get in here? <sighs> that cleft in the castle wall behind that maple grove. <laughs> there, but how would you... Uh, <laughs> Krom? You know that place, Krom? Yes. Yes, I bashed in part of the wall while training the shepherds. It's only a small hole, but I thought it was concealed, but... Uh, right. Your secret is safe with me. I come here only to warn you. Hmm? Warn us? Right. Keep... She keeps... She? She sounds like a she now that I think about it. She keeps saying... Right. Right. Right, why does she keep saying that? Or he? No. What, Imran? That's absurd. She's guarded at all hours. <sighs> what if? What if I told you I have seen the future? Would you believe me? Oh, shit. A future where Imran is killed. Here, tonight. <clears throat> seen the future? Have you lost your wits? My apologies. Yes, I expected you wouldn't believe me. So allow me to prove it. Whoa. I'm about to save your life. What? From him. Wow. I trust this proof will suffice. Yeah. Oh, she. Oh. Oh. You're a chick. You're a chick! Wait, you're... you're a woman? And quite the actress, too. Honestly, I'm surprised you didn't figure it out until just now. <laughs> 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 
Wow. So Marth is a chick. That's crazy. Wait a minute. Maybe that's why, um, what's his name? Let me think about it. Remember how Long Q, he said Long Q was actually a pretty good fighter. He doesn't know how he was bested so easily. Maybe he was bested so easily because Marth... Oh, that's, that would make sense, right? Because Marth was actually a girl the whole time. And he's not really comfortable around girls. So that's why he probably lost so easily during that fight. That makes so much sense now. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, wow, we can use nine people? One, we got six. Eight. No, 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 no. That, wait. Three, six, nine, ten. Wow. We can use ten units. I don't know why I said, uh... <laughs> I have no clue why I said, uh... I can't count today. So, you know what? Leave me alone. But I'm still kind of shocked that it turns out to be a girl. Jeez. Too many games I've been playing with cross-dressers. And I should have sold that bullion. I completely forgot to sell it. Let's view the map. Damn. They can't run in deep. Iron Lance. Alright, first of all, what we probably want to do is go ahead and actually give everybody a weapon that we found from the last battle. Cause I, <clears throat> I don't think I gave everybody the weapons we found on during the battle last time. So, who found the weapon? Hmm. Or did it go to the convoy? Well, he found the hand axe. Alright, so let's take that away from him. Store and give that to... Who can use axes? Just Vake? And Frederick too, I believe. Yup. So let's give him... Fable throwing axe. Huh. I forgot I had this. Let's give that to him. Let's give the hand axe to Frederick. Rescue. Uh, let's store that. Let's give that to Lisa if she can equip it. Yup. Moves a distant ally to an adjacent space. Uh, adjacent space. So she can warp people with that, or what? Range one. So they'd have to be next. To, uh, that makes no sense. Like, what would be the use of rescue? All right. So let's see. Who do we want in the battle? Obviously, 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 Crom has to be in the battle. He he's highlighted green, so he has to be in the battle. Sully's will bring Sumia. Varian is actually. I don't think he would be useful here. We might want to switch Varian out. So let me view the map again. What type of enemies are here? Axes, magic users, Validar. Validar is here? Whoa! Why is he level 1? Oh no, we gotta protect Imran. Alright, so definitely, let's go ahead and save the game here. I think we did everything that we can do at this moment. Ricky, I might want to switch him in for somebody else. No, it wouldn't hurt to have him in to get some experience. No, it wouldn't hurt to have another healer. So let's have her in. Alright, we're ready. Let's do this. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to probably go ahead and split this part to be honest, guys. <laughs> I'm sorry. I know this is a shorter episode, but I just got to get some rest. I'm getting sleepy and I don't want to, I don't want to take this on right now. I don't want to go ahead and take this battle. Alright, so I'm going to take me a break. I'll probably start recording again tomorrow. I don't want to do this right now because I need to get some sleep. I'm too damn sleepy at the moment and I'm tired and I need to render a whole bunch of videos. So I'm going to have to call this a shorted part. But when we return, we will be back with more Fire Emblem.